We have seen fans crossing the line a couple times this season, including at the NBA Finals. So I want to know, what were you thinking when you got into it with that Texas Tech fan when you were back in college? Because there is a line that fans sometimes cross with you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's, it's the thing about that is uh, nobody really knows the severity of it. Right before this game, I actually get a call from uh, one of my good family friends who's telling me my mom's in the hospital. Oh. She didn't tell me, so I just found out. So my mom was already in a state where, you know, anything, little thing was probably going to set me off. And crossing the line was that. You know, it's, it's a place for this type of things, and that's just not a place for it. You know, we're here, you're here coming to support, you're coming to watch. That's fine, we get it, you want to be a fan for your team. But if the tables were turned, if I touched you, what would probably happen to me? Mm -hmm. And I just don't think, as, as, as an athlete, we, we don't have that luxury of being able to do that. You know, a guy yeah. says, touches you, walks on the court, you, as you would probably do, anybody defend yourself, sure. and you get in trouble for it. It's just not right. Yeah. You, you got crucified at the time, if I recall the media coverage. I think one thing I would have to say, as we've seen more of these incidents in the last year or so, I think there's more nuance to the, the coverage. I, I think that the player's perspective is now appreciated and understood by more fans than it once was. Definitely. What should be off limits for a fan? I mean, in terms of topic of, uh, of insult or anything, are there, give me your sort of code. Oh, man, I've heard it all. So, you know, just, you know, I've heard guys say things about a guy's mother who probably just passed, a sister, a brother, or a family member, you know, it just, they take it too personally, or, or even just stepping on the court into our space where, you know, we're out here putting on a show for you guys, you know? We respect you guys as fans, just respect us as players is all we ask. Yeah, absolutely. I think that stuff is important to talk about, so thank you for coming on and talking about it. Now let's get to something a little more fun. What were you thinking when you got into it with Joel Embiid last season? Because you know how he is. Go ahead. Oh, man. So I, I actually know Joel pretty well. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that happened, um, <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, come on, Joel. Now you, Joel, you know, like, come on, Joel. You know, so he knows it's actually funny because I don't know, if, like, as I'm walking off, I could see he, and I talked to him after, he was laughing and smiling about it. You know, it, that he did exactly what I probably would do. Now, the difference between me and him is I get crucified for the flop. Piece. Well, also the difference is like a, a foot, right? So do you uh, want to go push someone that size? Listen, well, I'm the youngest of four boys. <laughs> so <laughs> my mom always told me the harder, the bigger they are, the harder they harder fall. Harder they fall, all right. And speaking of people falling, Marcus Smart, what were you thinking? When Kyle, Kyle Korver um, flagrantly failed you in the 2016 playoffs, roll the tape, please. Go ahead, speak. Oh, uh, you know, um, <laughs> that's a flop. Uh, let's get that straight. That's a flop. You were the youngest of four kids. I was the youngest of four kids, so I had to learn how to get my way, you know. And, and but to, to to speak on the whole flopping situation in this, this was hilarious. Yes. Right? I, I I deserved everything that came my way after okay. that. So, um, but I hear it all the time is flopper, flopper this, but like I tell guys and everybody, the only difference between me is I flop on defense, your favorite player flops on offense. I love that. I've heard you say that before. Yeah. That's the only difference, you know? <laughs> and, and especially in a game where the offense has nothing but the advantage. Mm -hmm. Defense has to do something to get that advantage back, so an offensive guy can put his hands on you and touch you as much as he wants. But the minute you touch him, it's a foul. So <laughs> you got to draw the attention to the officials to let them know that, hey, it's working both ways now. He just litigated that brilliantly. I know. I, well seriously. Yeah, there well you go. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.